Managing in the lower leagues is fun. Managing in the lower leagues is a challenge. Managing in the lower leagues will also cause you to tear out what's left of your hair. And uh, that grinding noise you hear during the recording of this video, I swear, hand to God, is not my teeth. <sighs> the season's going well. The transfer window is finally closed. We're at the top of the league so far, but it's not without a few roadblocks in the way. My name's F. Angelico, and this is The Return Out of Gloria, Episode 2 with S.C. Bastia. So, this is where the fun begins. Had to move the table, had to move the window up a little bit just to kind of see everything. As you can see down here, loan repayments and interest 482,000 euros a month. That is heinous, especially when you consider our match day income is hovering around 4,000 euros, and other income is at, well, well math on the fly is hard. 40, another 4,800 pounds. So, I mean, we've already lost 500,000 pounds this month, and it's only the 8th of September. Uh, to top it off, we are overspending on our payroll by 37 pounds, 35 pounds, 35 pounds. God, math is definitely hard. And we're getting no percent of our transfer budget should we make any moves. We did make some moves, though. One of the things I did as soon as I got the coaching situation and everything sorted out, I went to every free agent available through the uh, scouting screen and uh, invited them all on trial. And I actually found a couple of very nice players who I think can help us out. We had one out the uh, entire transfer window. Anthony Martin, who was originally my starting keeper, um, left on a free to uh, MC Iran. And the reason he left, well, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, first in, Safwan Mabai, who I actually know from my Crystal Palace save. I saw him on a free, and I went ahead and signed him anyways. Three and a half, car three and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential ability, defensive center back, defensive right back. Really, really good player for this level. 21 years old. I expect him to be a part of the team for at least another two to three years. You can see at the moment he is unhappy with my head coach treatment of Rahabi Kafudi, and I'll show you that here in a second. In the meantime, I'm going to move this back down here to the right. Next in, Florian Adriani. Andriani, 21 years old, three-star current ability, four-and-a-half star potential ability keeper. I brought him in. The other guy got upset, so I let the other guy go. He's got a lot of potential. His first touch is a little lacking, but I love his bravery. His determination's okay. His physicals are nice as well. He's got decent command of the area, decent communication. And I'm totally missing... What am I missing here? Uh, this is what I'm missing. The tribute analysis. Now, he's a very good keeper for this level. And he's made a couple of really nice saves in a couple games already. Ha! <laughs> Next up, Issa Diawara. I went to my manager and I said, hey, we need some help. Who's out there available on a free? Uh, Issa Diawara was out there. Not quite sure how my manager found him, but uh, brought him in on trial. Liked what I saw. He got a couple of games in on the under-19s. Uh, signed him to a hot prospect contract. He's getting 85 euros a week. It's a risk, but the fact that I have no money to spend on salary, it's one I have to take. Signed him on a Monday. Tuesday was his first practice with the first team. He fell down, broke his arm. Out, what was it, four to eight weeks. Now it's three to six weeks. So, I don't know what that portends for the save as a whole, but it, it might not be good. Needed some help. The only way I'm going to get it is on loan. Loris Mathias is from uh, SC Bastia Borgo, another team here on Corsica. I think I went out and inquired about 20 different loan players. And uh, 18 of those teams wanted me to pay the full salary of the loanee, of the loanee whether they were playing or not. I, just, I don't have the money. And the two players that uh, the team agreed to loan them decided not to come here. Then again, I think I've 
gone out and looked at about 30 different players and have tried offering them contracts and I just don't have the financial package to entice them to come to Bastia. So we're pretty much stuck with the team we have. Maybe something will happen in the January transfer window. I can free up a little bit of salary, but it's going to get interesting. Uh, Sofiane Van Brom, I brought in. I needed depth on the defensive left back side because I only have one starter there, and I have a couple players who can kind of sort of play there, but no, not really. So uh, I brought him in, and he stepped in as a full-time starter, actually. And, uh, you know, that's our transfer window. Y yay! Schedule-wise, though, we are off to a really good start. Um, I did not schedule these friendlies. Uh, whoever was here before me did, and they were pretty good. The reserves was my first game here. You know, hey, let's see how the team is. Uh, we lost the one goal... We lost the, um, why am I on this view? Oh, that's why I was on that view, which I will show you here in just a second. Um, lost the uh, game against AS Monaco Reserves. Uh, I'm kind of glad we held them to one goal. Pietro Pellegrini, Pietro Pellegrini, who is one of the best young strikers in the game, got the score. The fact that we held him to the one goal was very, very nice. Had a good game against the Basel under-18s. Had a really good game against ST Sturmgratz. They played their first team, and we beat them 2-1. Uh, beat Stade Lavola, Lavalois. Oh, good grief. Some of these names are going to be hard, and I apologize. I'm totally going to butcher them. And then we ended our friendlies with a 3-0 loss to a Scully, which was a little bit upsetting. Uh, got the season off to a really nice start against AC Gimenos, a 2-1 win. Vakana Chaka. Bacana, who is a 30-year-old striker, 3.5-star career ability, 3.5-star potential ability, had both goals. They're the only goals he scored this season. I had, him on the, I had him on the transfer list at the time. I thought, hey, he scored two goals for me. I'll take him off the transfer list. I really thought about putting him back on the transfer list. Maybe that's kind of an incentive for him to score, but it, it didn't take. Uh, we had a friendly against Benevento, which we lost 2-0, but... It, you know the the stadium was we're not getting we're not getting any sort of crowd. It's odd. It says we have twenty five hundred season ticket holders, but we're only getting you know a couple of thousand fans a game, which I'm gonna go into here in just a second. Then we were up against uh, AC San Remi de Province, which we won one nil. Uh, Ludovic Ganesic, a thirty minute penalty kick to see us through there. We were then away against ES Canat Rocheville. Gary Kulabaye, a 16th minute goal there. Drew against uh, the Ejaculate Reserves. Uh, Benjamin Santelli, 44th minute goal. Junior Tundi had a goal like two minutes later to tie it up. Gnesset had an absolutely horror show of a game. But this was actually a really good one for us. Ejaculate has some, has some pretty decent, decent players on their side. And then we were up against Villefranche Saint Jean, who I believe at the time were in, in first place. And we beat them 2 0. Sofiane bourgeois bell our youth striker, had a 26-minute goal. Christophe Vincent had a 48-minute goal. Uh, they had a guy sent off in the 69th minute that really kind of helped us out, at least to hold the shutout. And this is our squad, sorted by ability. A couple of things stand out to me. We're solid, which is okay for this level. We're old, which is not okay for the team going forward. And we're paying an awful lot of money in salary. Christoph Vincent alone is making 2,300 pounds. And when your salary is 16,000 pounds, and you got a guy, you got one guy out of 22 at a minimum taking up one anything that, you've got issues. Uh, Mabaye, I signed to a 500 pound contract because uh, he wanted 650, and I got him down to 500. If I could move just a couple of these players, things would be very, very nice. But. Uh, we're helped out in that we have some very good youth players. If you go down here, Sofian Boris Bell, 17-year-old striker, two-star current ability, five-star potential ability. Armin Boutra, uh, two-star current ability, four-star potential ability on the midfield. Anthony Roncaglia, uh, defensive midfielder who I am training as a defensive center back, two-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential ability. Yohan Karbache, uh, two-star current ability, four-star potential ability. Uh, this is something I'm still trying to figure out. Where is he? Uh, 
Rahavi Kifuti. Three and a half star criminal ability, three and a half star pinch ability. Midfielder on the right side, advanced midfielder on the right and left side, is not registered. And I couldn't register him. I have no idea how on earth or why this happened. I don't know if it's a database issue or what the heck is going on. I transfer listed him. Nobody picked him up. He came to me saying, why are you transfer listing me? The option to say, I can't play you, so I want to get you some money some more wasn't there. I said, you, you know, you're making 675 pounds a week. I need the money. And he was unhappy. The team didn't necessarily split. There's a couple guys that support him and a couple guys that don't. But uh, getting the finances, let me pull this up here real quick. This is uh, something I pulled off of a blog post, Inverted Wingbacks did, and she kindly uh, pointed me to this. So uh, this is something you can, this is a little formula you can use to figure out what your uh, stadium income in terms of season tickets will support for a weekly salary. So you take your season ticket cost, you multiply that by the number of season ticket holders you have, your average match day price, which for us is uh, 1300 which for us is 13 euros, and you have your average attendance, which is what I'm figuring out over here. I will add to this, and this will automatically populate. We have 13 home games, so our season ticket income off those 13 home games is 187,500 pounds. Our total ticket sales, and this is where it gets a little interesting, is... The average match day ticket price times your average attendance minus your season ticket holders times the total number of home games. Which leaves us negative 145,458 pounds. The yearly total, if you take those two numbers and add them together, is 42,041 pounds and a little bit of change. The weekly total, if you take that and divide it by 52, is 808 pounds. So right now, in the club's financial condition, we can support a weekly salary of 808 euro, pounds, euros. Good grief. I'm, I'm in France now. i got to switch that over to euros. Is 808 euros a week. So, that's just... That's, that's just lovely. It's, it's, the season is going to be a knuckle-biter. We have to get promotion if we don't. The long-term financial stability of this club is really, really up in the air. Uh, cut things where I can. I don't have a full coaching staff. I don't have a full scouting staff. I do have a general manager. That may have been a mistake, but I like having a general manager. I got my chief scout. All he's doing is scouting the next opponent. I took everything out of the scouting budget I could, put it in the transfer budget, took that out of the transfer budget, put it back into the... Uh, the weekly salary and as you can see we're we're not bad in terms of our in terms of our coaching we're really good in some areas um i have a head physio i have a regular physio i have who is this i have a doctor but they're not showing up there i'm not quite sure why the reserve squad is is players who i'm trying to move on there's, there's just no other choice about it um i don't know why i have Genest on the reserve squad. He should be on the senior squad. But that, I know why. Um, in lower league France, you uh, if you get three yellow cards in ten games, you miss a game. And so I put him on the reserve squad game, which I'm scheduling. And uh, that's why he's there. The under-19 team, it's got some potential as well. And that's about the best thing I can say about it. But as you can see, uh, I'm skimping on the coaching there. I've got the one physio for him. I've got the one reserve coach who, frankly, is, is not the best. But, you know, he, he wanted the job, and he was the right price. So today, we are away at FC Coat Blue. I'm going to go set the best level for that and the reserves. It's odd. We get seven reserves here in the fifth division, but I think when we go up, that goes to five. I'm pretty sure in the Champion National, the third division, it's five, unless that's changed recently, which is entirely possible. I know French football underwent a decent reorganization last year. Um, so maybe they changed some of the rules, but we will find out. Knock on wood, eventually. Anyhow, I'm going to set the best 11 for the match, and we're going to come back with that in just a bit.
I do like this intro screen. This is a nice intro screen. Well, today we are playing FC Coat Blue, and we're playing... This isn't our standard formation. I've got a couple I've, I've been fooling around with, but we've got good defenders. We have really good defensive midfielders. We don't have very good midfielders. We have a couple of good wingers, and I've got a couple decent strikers. The problem is my best player, Vincent, is a really good defensive midfielder and a so-so midfielder. So I've been kind of playing a couple of unbalanced formations, usually um, a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-1-2-2-1. Um, or a 4-3-3, I guess they're calling it these days. Uh, I played this last game. It did well for us. It lets me get a couple of uh, offensive players up top. We're playing a fluid counterattack mostly with a couple of things thrown in. And it seems to be working out well for us. We're not scoring a lot of goals, but we're not letting in a lot of goals either. And that's what I'm looking for. Now, well, first highlight of the match, about 16 minutes in. Adriana up to Vincent. Toscati, can he get there? He can't cross it. No, you're going to shoot it right at the keeper, even though you had the other guy over there. Vincent sends it in, knocked away. Sunoco, up to Kevel. Cross over to Moss, all alone on the left. Drives forward. The defenders are back, though, and he is dispossessed by Sioni. Well done. Half hour in, no highlights since that one. That's, that's good and bad. Tool with a throw in. Sends it right to Vincent. Troncaglia to Mabai. I'm looking at this now, realizing I did not introduce the team. I was talking about the tactic. I, I didn't introduce the team. <sighs> Villar holds it up, sends it back to El Curdy. He sends it forward. Cabal has it. Cross the field to Ben Sharif. Almost out of bounds, but he stopped it. Oh. Oh. Man. <sighs> Who's the number three player? Well, let me click on him. Ben Brom tried going for the uh, tackle. Totally whiffed. It was a nice cross, though. Nice finish by Moss. Shea Trill. And he scored. Don't even know how good they are. We were top of the league. Santini just picked up an injury too. Uh, potential groin injury. Kind of twinge just hearing that, okay? Of course, Santini picked up the injury. Poggy is going to come in for Santini. He's not bad, but he's 34 years old. These two guys need to flip. Should have caught that earlier. Uh, Ron Kanglia is my uh, is, is one of my youth players that I'm really really hoping good things from. He's a natural defensive midfielder. He's a great anchor man and a defensive midfielder, capable halfback, ball winning midfielder. He's decent so far as a central defender, but the ten marking, the fourteen tackling, thirteen positioning, fourteen decision making, the other things could use a little bit of work. But, you know, he's young. He's 18 years old. He'll get better. And I have no problems paying him a little bit more to keep him here. Oh, Pass is intercepted. Twilly over to Labasse to Neuer over to Sunoco. Back out to Ben Sharif on the right. He drives towards the center of the field. Challenged. Gets by. Passes it to Kebel, who sends it over to Sunoco. Long shot over the crossbar. Have to make some changes here in a minute. Butra is not having a good game. Actually, nobody on my squad is having a really good game. You know what? We'll uh, get some players off. I'm going to buy it. Just picked up a yellow, too. Just... Kabache can come on for Butra. <laughs> Poji picked up a yellow, too. Okay. Brahman is not having the best game, so we will bring on Salas. Which, honestly, is essentially swapping like for like. They're both two-and-a-half-star current, two-and-a-half-star potential players. 
But now there's two of them on my squad instead of the one. I was playing with fire there. It took me a couple games to realize, holy cow, I only have the one defensive left back. Moss. He figures the first live comp of this new series is going to be a 3-0 loss. What the heck did Adriano do there? Oh, if I didn't laugh, I'd drink. And it's too early in the night for me to... Well, maybe it's not too early in the night for me to start doing that. Holy cow. Somebody get injured? Boris Bell got injured. I have already used all three of my subs. Oh, well, they're second in the league. Okay. Well, they're second in the league now. They, they were below us. Well, they're still second in the league now. So, yeah, they were in at least fifth. You know what? Let me get just the one goal, guys. Villar to El Curdy. Sends it up. Mbappé intercepts it. Sends it to Santelli to Barbica. Paji. Up in the space to Carbache. Crosses it. Santelli. Far post and in. Well, we break up the clean sheet. 92 minutes in. Extra time goal. Thank you, FM. Thought Carbacci was going to take a shot. But he passed it. I don't know what. Barakar was thinking. Totally pronouncing his name. I got to go in and give some of these guys names. There's just no two ways about it. Well, we're five minutes into four minutes of extra time. This should be the last of it here. They intercept the throw in, and that's the game. Now, tied for first place. One loss. Well, there goes the invincible season. Yep, we lose the top spot. Oh, how long is Bell injured for? Three or four months, 20 league minutes. Okay. Well, that puts a damper on things. We finally lose. Schedule-wise, we're averaging two or three games a month. So I'm going to do what I can to schedule any friendly that will give us some money. You know, if it means going out and getting beating by PSG 20 nothing in order to get a couple hundred thousand euros, I will do that. We got the French Cup starting soon. Oh, we've got to go to expectations. I told the board we'd reach the 10th round. And I told them we'd finish around the top of the league. But we're aiming for automatic promotion. There's just there's no two ways about it. Uh, French Cup. This is, this is every single team in France gets drawn and put into a draw. And then the team that is at least two divisions below is the host. So it gives the lower division teams the ability to kind of make some money. But it's, it's literally every team in France. And you do get some surprises. There have been some, some 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 quality lower league teams that have made it to finals. And one, if I remember correctly. Um, click on the wrong thing here. I told me make I told him we would make the tenth round. Of course. That's because the winner gets 103,000 euros. We get 52 and a half if you are uh, get to the ninth round. Eighth round is 22 and a half. Seventh round is seven and a half. So essentially it doubles every round. If we make it to the 10th round, that'd be great. You're playing some League Two. You're going to be playing some the better teams here, but the, there's always a couple of teams that sneak in. So there's a possibility. The 11th round is kind of where you're going to run into a good team no matter what. If you manage to get past that, it's the quarterfinals. This is when you're playing all your League One teams. The semifinal, you're definitely playing a League One team. If by miracle we you win it, um, you get 2.6 million euros, which would be nice. Wouldn't wipe out all of our debt from this year, not by a long shot. But as I said, if I go back to the calendar, uh, as you can see, the under 19s play on Sunday. I can uh, do my best to. Sp 
what I'll probably do is schedule the reserves on Wednesdays, unless there is a another uh, reserve game going on today. But anyhow, getting back to the calendar, you know, October got the two matches there. Perfect opportunity for some money making there. Same with November. Same with December. January transfer window opens. Maybe we can move a couple of players, get some relief on our salary. Until then, we're going to be white knuckling it, but that's just the way it goes. Well, how's that not an FM 19 thing? How's that not an FM thing in general? You win five games, you go play your first live comedy, your new series, you get beat 3 1. Although, admittedly, Coat Blue is a good team for this level. It's going to be an interesting season. We've got to get promotion. If we fail, we've got to get promotion next year. If, if that doesn't happen, we're probably going to be out of a job. So, uh, next episode, we will. Uh, I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump pretty far ahead. Um, we'll play the fifth round game, and then after that, we'll be jumping pretty far ahead. Uh, the fifth round game. I'll also show you one of the things I'm going to be doing to help track the uh, training. I, for the first time, I'm doing everything in a save. I'm doing all the team training. I'm doing all the individual training. At least for, let me rephrase that. I'm doing the team training for the senior team. I'm doing the individual training for everybody. It's a little bit more involved, but I want to see how well I can do. Frankly, I can't do worse than the, than the computer does sometimes, can I? We'll, we'll have to see. Anyhow, if you liked what you've seen and heard, please leave a like. Subscribe to the channel for more content. Questions, criticisms, comments, leave those down below. I'll answer those as fast as I can. My name is FM Jellico, and I thank you for watching.